beneath the city of Naples, Italy, lies a sprawling volcanic caldera that dwarfs Vesuvius. It's called Campi Flegre, and right now, the ground there is rising and shaking. This is not some distant, primordial threat. It is one of the most dangerous supervolcanoes on Earth, located in one of the most densely populated regions of the planet. For centuries, the world has fixated on its famous neighbor, Mount Vesuvius, the destroyer of Pompeii. But the true monster of the region is Campi Flegre, a vast sunken caldera teeming with vents, hot springs, and a restless magma chamber. Today, over half a million people live directly inside this caldera, with millions more in the greater Naples area living under its shadow and the volcano is stirring. In a phenomenon known as Bradyseism, the ground is rising, pushing the port city of Pozzuoli upwards by several feet. This is accompanied by thousands of small earthquakes, a seismic swarm that is rattling nerves and cracking buildings. This isn't the first time. The volcano has a history of these cycles of uplift and subsidence, but the current episode is the most intense in decades, forcing scientists and civil authorities to ask a terrifying question. Is this the prelude to a new eruption, or is it just the volcano breathing, as it has done for centuries? To understand the risk, we must dive into its explosive past and analyze the data pouring in from one of the most intensely monitored volcanoes on the planet. The history of Campi Flegrei is written in layers of ash that stretch across Europe. Its story is one of colossal power. Around 39,000 years ago, it produced the Campanian Ignimbrite Super Eruption, the largest volcanic event in Europe for the last 200,000 years. This cataclysmic eruption spewed hundreds of cubic kilometers of ash and rock, covering the region in a thick blanket and sending a plume of ash across the continent, potentially triggering a volcanic winter that impacted global climate. The sheer scale of this event is difficult to comprehend. The atmospheric haze of fine dust and sulfur aerosols would have lingered for years, dimming the sun and cooling the planet. It was this eruption that created the massive caldera we see today. But the volcano wasn't finished. Around 15,000 years ago, another major eruption, the Neapolitan Yellow Tuff eruption, occurred, further shaping the landscape. The sense of living on a thin crust above a simmering giant is palpable in the region, with steam venting from the ground in places like the Solfaterra Crater. So what is causing the current unrest? The primary driver of the activity at Campi Flegre is a phenomenon called Bradyseism, a cyclical rising and falling of the ground surface. This is caused by changes in the volcanic system deep beneath the caldera. There are two main theories for what drives it. The first, and most concerning, is that it's caused by the intrusion of fresh magma into the shallow plumbing system. As new magma forces its way upwards, it heats the surrounding rock and fluids, causing the ground to swell like a balloon. The second theory is that it's primarily a hydrothermal phenomenon, where hot volcanic gases are heating the groundwater trapped in the rock, causing it to expand and push the surface up. While this is less immediately dangerous than rising magma, it can still destabilize the crust and potentially trigger a smaller, steam-driven phreatic eruption. Whatever the cause, the current cycle of uplift is creating a constant grinding tension. The feeling on the ground in Pozzuoli, the city at the heart of the caldera, is one of weary vigilance. The continuous swarms of small earthquakes, though rarely strong enough to cause major structural damage, serve as a constant, unnerving reminder of the power beneath. For residents, this isn't an abstract geological concept. It's the daily reality of creaking walls, rattling windows, and the low, deep rumble of the earth. The Brady Seaism is not just a scientific curiosity. It's a visible, measurable process. Ancient Roman markets in Pozzuoli now sit below sea level, 
their stone pillars pockmarked by marine mollusks, clear evidence of a time when the ground sank. Then, centuries later, the ground rose again, lifting these ruins back out of the water. This geological dance has defined life here for millennia. But what is the latest data telling us now? Italian scientists at the Vesuvius Observatory maintain one of the most sophisticated volcano monitoring networks in the world. They use a vast array of instruments to keep a constant watch on Campi Flegrei's vital signs. GPS stations measure the ground deformation with millimeter precision, tracking the uplift in real time. Seismometers record the thousands of micro-earthquakes, mapping their location and depth to understand where the rock is fracturing. Gas sensors analyze the chemistry of the fumes escaping from vents, looking for changes in gases like sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide that could signal the arrival of new magma from deep within the system. The data from recent years shows a clear and accelerating trend. The ground has been rising continuously since 2005, and the rate of seismicity has increased dramatically. While most of the earthquakes are small, their sheer number suggests that the crust is under significant stress and is becoming progressively weaker. The sound of a seismic alert on a researcher's computer is the sound of another piece of the puzzle falling into place. But does this increased activity mean an eruption is imminent? That's the critical question, and the answer is deeply uncertain. The volcano has gone through similar periods of intense unrest before, most notably in the early 1980s, without erupting. During that crisis, the ground rose even faster than it is now, and parts of Pozzuoli were temporarily evacuated. After a few years, the system quieted down again, and the eruption never came. This history provides some comfort, suggesting that the volcano can release a great deal of stress without breaking. However, there is a crucial difference. Scientists analyzing the seismic data from the current unrest believe the crust is weaker now than it was in the 1980s. The repeated cycles of stretching and relaxing have made the rock more brittle, more prone to fracturing. This means that the system might not be able to withstand the same amount of pressure it did before. The S are forming. The question is, what comes next? The most likely scenario, should an eruption occur, is not a full-blown super eruption like the one 39,000 years ago. That would be an extremely low probability event. A much more plausible threat is a smaller, explosive eruption similar to the one that occurred in 1538. That eruption, after a long period of ground uplift, created a whole new volcanic cone, Monte Nuovo, in just a matter of days. While small by geological standards, an eruption of that scale today would be a catastrophe. It would involve explosive bursts of ash, rock, and gas, creating pyroclastic flows that could devastate the area immediately around the vent. Ashfall would blanket Naples, shutting down the airport, crippling infrastructure, and causing widespread respiratory problems. The sheer density of population and infrastructure within the caldera means that even a small eruption would have devastating human and economic consequences. The thought of a pyroclastic flow moving through a densely populated modern city is the ultimate nightmare scenario for volcanologists. The challenge for Italian authorities is immense. They have a detailed evacuation plan, the Red Zone, which calls for the mandatory evacuation of the half million people living in the most dangerous area. But implementing it is a logistical and social nightmare. You cannot evacuate a major metropolitan area every time the volcano shows signs of unrest. The disruption would be immense. The authorities must wait for a clear, unambiguous signal that an eruption is inevitable. But volcanoes are notoriously unpredictable. By the time that clear signal arrives, it might be too late to evacuate everyone safely. This is the terrible dilemma facing the people of Naples. 
they live with a constant, low-level anxiety, a background hum of risk that is part of the fabric of their lives. They are caught between the scientific uncertainty and the immense inertia of daily life. The result is a fragile balance. The city of Naples and the towns within the caldera are a testament to human resilience, a civilization that has chosen to live alongside one of nature's most powerful and unpredictable forces. But the data from Campi Flagre is a stark reminder that this balance is not guaranteed. The rising ground and the persistent tremors are the volcano's way of saying that the system is active, it is under pressure, and it is evolving. Whether this leads to a new eruption or another period of quiet is a question that, for now, remains locked deep beneath the ground. If you find these explorations of our planet's active hazards compelling, consider following for more in-depth analysis.